Hi guys, my name is Bethany. I'm the girl behind Well Loved Knits, and if you couldn't already tell, we really love knitting on this channel. In this video today, I wanted to show you the behind the scenes making process of a new design of mine. I'm calling it the Seamless Mock Neck Sweater. I was playing between a couple of uh, names, the Petite Mock Neck Sweater or the Seamless Mock Neck Sweater. Um, both of them are good options, but really it just means that this was very much influenced by a sweater pattern that I already have, the Cozy Mock Neck Sweater which if you're not familiar with that, it is a very chunky, very warm, very cozy mock neck style sweater <laughs> knit on really thick 15 millimeter needles and very chunky wool yarn and very warm. Love it. I get so much wear out of it, but only in a certain part of the year when it's at its coldest, as you can imagine. So I wanted to take that design and then make it into something that I could wear and get a lot more wear out of and wear I don't know, on uh, transitional times of the year as well, like fall uh, and spring. The thing that I was most excited about was this shoulder seam construction right here, um, where it just sits on the shoulders and really defines the front and the back, which I really love. And I love how this neckline is sitting up on the neck. I'm really happy with how this sweater turned out and I'm really excited to show you the process. Stay tuned to the end of the video. I would really love your help to test out this sweater pattern, the instructions, and more on that later. But for now, let's get into the making of the sweater. For this project, I'm using Wool Magang's Al Pacino Merino in this really beautiful cornflower blue shade, which I actually picked up a few months ago with this project in mind. So you might have seen that in a previous knitting podcast episode. So I've been really dying to work with this yarn. It has been put away. I was being very responsible, making sure that I finished all my other projects before I actually got to this one. My first impressions of this yarn, it is so soft, as you can imagine, it's mixed with alpaca and merino wool. So it's really soft, squishy, the perfect yarn, I think, for what I have in mind. And I'll also be using my favorite interchangeable needles. These are Leica needles. I honestly have not gone back to another set since, or I haven't used my other needles since then. These are just too good. I really like working with wood needles, so I would definitely recommend those. And for this project specifically, I decided to start with 6.5 millimeter needles and then switch over to eight millimeter needles. So this design was Definitely inspired by my Cozy Mock Neck sweater pattern, which I think I mentioned. And in that pattern, I work it with multiple panels that are later seamed together. For this design, I wanted to challenge myself to see if I could work it out seamlessly. So starting from the top and working our way down. So I cast on stitches for the collar and then worked in two by two rib until my piece measured around 11 centimeters. To make the mock neck collar, I wanted to go for a folded collar, which would be nice and squishy and really sturdy. So I folded that piece in half and then joined the cast on edge with my live stitches. To do this, uh, I matched up the stitches so that there isn't any weird pulling and that everything is in line. So a good tip to remember is that you're looking for the opposite stitch than what is active on the needles. So for example, if your next stitch is a knit stitch, you'll need to look for a corresponding purl stitch to knit together. So I kind of just follow my way up the, up the rows to see where that is in line with the cast on edge and I did this across the entire round. So for each live stitch that I had, I matched up the corresponding stitch that was on the cast on edge, and I slipped that over on my needles and then knit the live stitch as well as the cast on edge stitch together and continued doing that the whole way around until I was left with the same number of stitches that I started with. Then I took some stitch markers. I really love these stitch markers specifically because they are like clip-on stitch markers, which make them super convenient to add in. And especially me for this project, it was really helpful because as I was designing this piece as I went, I wasn't sure where I wanted my raglan stitches to sit until I got to this point. So I marked out two stitches on each side of the collar because for this sweater, 
I was going to only have two points where I would be making increases to shape the front, back, and shoulders. If you're interested in more of an explanation of how to do increases on a raglan knit sweater, I really recommend you go check out my video on the part one of making the sable sweater pattern. There I'll go through all the steps to set up a raglan sweater and then show in detail how to make left and right leaning increases. Once I got to a length that I was happy with, I divided the front and the back of the sweater and started working them up separately. Eventually, I joined both the front and the back together, um, joining the body in the round, which left me with two armhole openings that I picked up and worked later on. I don't know about you guys, but I always seem to underestimate the amount of rows I need to work for the body. So to make sure that I didn't make that mistake this time, I took a darning needle and a skein of scrap yarn to slip my stitches off my needle so I could do a quick try on. You also have these like stoppers that you can use if you have like interchangeable needles. I just, I wanted to make sure that I could also see how wide this sweater had gotten to, to make sure that I really liked the way that that looked, which is why I decided to do this extra step because then I was able to see how wide the sweater had gotten, how much it grew. Whereas if I just used those stoppers on my interchangeable needles, I probably wouldn't have been able to get a better idea or I wouldn't have been able to get as good an idea as what I did with the string. Honestly, usually I'm too lazy to do this, but I felt like it would be worthwhile this time. And then that gave me an idea of how many more rows I needed to do before I finished off the body with a few rows of two by two rib with my 6.5 millimeter needles. While this isn't a tutorial, I really wanted to show how I pick up stitches because I don't think I've really ever showcased it in a video before. So when I pick up stitches around an opening for a sleeve, unless the pattern says otherwise, I pick up every stitch along the opening as close to the edge as possible. So when you work back and forth, there's a little ridge that's formed on the side. I don't pick up between that opening, but instead I use the last stitch of the row. So into the last stitch of the row, I will pick up one stitch, which I've definitely shown how to do that on neck openings, but not on sleeves. When I've picked up all of the stitches all around, I then join in the round and just knit my sleeve in the round until it's the right length for me. You can see that after knitting the first row of stitches, there should be a thin seam where you picked up stitches, which isn't too bulky. If you pick up stitches too far in, then you might have some extra fabric and some bulk that appears around the shoulder. But if you pick up on the last stitch of the row, all the way around the opening, you will have this nice little seam that's not too bulky, that's just right. Then I worked until my sleeve was the right length for me, 
and work decreases to create some volume on the cuff, then switch to my 6.5 millimeter needles and worked in two by two ribbing for a few rows and then casting off. Final thoughts on this sweater. I am so happy with how it turned out. I'm really proud of so many elements of it. <laughs> the neckline in particular, I really love how it's sitting up on the neck. And um, I love, love, love the construction at the shoulder. Something about this is just so satisfying to knit. And then it's also very satisfying when you're wearing it, taking pictures of it. You, you could see like while I was recording, I was really into the seams, the side seams. I don't know, something about it, it's, it's just really satisfying because it's seamless. And then the balloon sleeves are just really flattering and really cute right now. I feel like I love sweaters like that. They just feel so large and just nice and cozy. And of course, the two by two rib is something that I'm absolutely in love with these days. Two by two rib, I, yeah, I don't know. It's just something with how thick it is. It's just really beautiful in my opinion. Yeah, it's really lovely. So I hope you enjoyed looking at the entire process, seeing the entire process of making this sweater. Of course, I still have my ends to weave in, but um, yeah, she's, basically done. And all I have to do now is grade the pattern and finish up the instructions. So that being said, I am looking for people to help me test out this pattern. So if you're interested in testing out this pattern, I actually have an application that's available on my website. So if you go there, there are all the details of what's to be expected over on that page and um, you can apply to test knit. Do know that I only pick a couple of people per size, so I'm really sorry if I don't get to you. Um, there's always next time. So thank you guys again for watching. I hope you love the look of this sweater as much as I do. Hopefully um, this will be released as a pattern very soon in the next couple of months. Um, once I get some very valuable feedback from my testers. I'm really looking forward to see what you guys think. Also, let me know what you think about the name. I have to stick to, I've decided I have to stick to my literal names. <laughs> so it's either the seamless mock neck sweater or the petite not mock neck sweater. But given that this is a very oversized sweater, I was thinking maybe the petite mock neck sweater doesn't really make any sense. I'm thinking about it because it's smaller needle size. That's kind of where I was coming from. But let me know. <laughs> Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I always love sharing my knitting things with you guys. It's so much fun. Next week, I think we're gonna be doing a knitting podcast, so stay tuned for that. Yeah, thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time. Bye.